used to be this book um, that a lot of people used in in uh, marriage classes, uh, and it had been become dated uh, in a bunch of ways. Not only had it not been updated, but sort of the views of it that were looking at it um, reflected questions or issues or a framework that um, was five, ten, coming up on like fifteen years old. So not only did we wanted to bring do something new, but we wanted to bring this kind of new framework. Um, that reflected on marriage and family and, and sex from this sort of uh, a kind of a social ethics perspective. And the last piece of that is that there's just been a lot of really, really bright, brilliant people out there working in the field and to try to sort of pull all of those things together, pull all those people together and a nice little uh, overview of what's going on in the field uh, was even more enticing as we were moving forward. It's really, really what we're calling uh, family ethics now it, it is really developing in the world of Catholic theological ethics. So I think maybe some people might have an impression of what conversations about marriage and family might be, and that either looks um, super traditional, um, so we're gonna talk about um, NFP all the time, or these holy families that seem really far removed from ordinary Catholic family life, or, um, or it's, uh, it's kind of the, we're gonna slam humanity vitae and, <laughs> um, and maybe family's not really all that important anyway, because we really wanna talk about bigger social issues. And we think that family ethics is actually something that is so much bigger than all of that. And families are where so many of us really have our biggest moral impact and it's where our big moral decisions are and it's where um, we struggle and it's where we're living out our commitment to discipleship. It's almost too big <laughs> when you start thinking about all of the different things that impact family. And so we really had to think about what mattered most, but we knew that we didn't, we didn't want to get stuck in here's a pro, here's a con, here's a pro, here's a con, and all these controversial issues. Um, that's been done, and we've done that in our classes, but we think that there are other kinds of conversations that we wanna have. And so we knew we wanted to have, for instance, a, a conversation that's become really important socially and in ethics, like about incarceration, or conversations about migration. We, but those things are all about families, and they raise all kinds of issues for family life. Like if family life's really important and people need to be a communion of persons, what does that mean for the time that incarcerated people get to see their families? Or what does it mean about migration laws um, that have to do with families coming to, the, coming to the country? Or what does it have to do with mixed status families? So we wanted to, um, so we had to kind of leave behind some of the traditional controversies in order to broaden our scope and take in these newer issues. Yeah, I, I, I remember when we were putting, trying to figure out who to invite and how to organize it, we went through like several iterations of a kind of a table of contents and it just wasn't sort of coming together because we were even, even though we had this idea, we were still stuck like pro con or do we have someone that sort of speaking to this view and then, um, and then we were, we had the, it's funny, we had the title and then we had this list and, and Julie's like, we should organize it by sex, love and families. <laughs> and this helped us to sort of frame it, not as like right, left or personal social, but like as these are all sort of moving around these sort of individual topics. And that enabled us to put some real interesting combinations of people that like if you were to try to map them out on a left-right scale, might be in an extreme, but when you put them together, they seem to be talking about the same issue in a kind of complementary sort of fashion, so you get a fuller uh, perspective on it. The, the, like the first section on sex has a bunch of ways in which you uh, attends to a bunch of issues about uh, sexual orientation and violence and justice and fulfillment, um, but it's not really like focusing on an issue base, but trying to articulate a kind of construct a positive view of sexuality that addresses all of those sort of issues. And so you get people that you, again, we don't typically, we tend to box off into categories kind of together uh, working um, in tandem. So it's a really, that it took us a while even to sort of put those, to figure out how to organize it. And I, it, it's just a challenge, I think, to get out of that background. 
for thinking about the courses that still exist at many uh, Catholic universities, um, whether they're sexual ethics or marriage and family, or or even um, a Christian ethics course that has a a unit on on family. I think that'll it'll be a great book for that kind of class um, because the issues will be both engaging um, in a real basic way, but also new. And, and, and I know that so many of us, when we have students who come to our mostly required classes in Christian ethics, we want to we wanna show them, oh, it's not what you've heard um, at your parish or at home. There are all these other conversations going on and theology is way more interesting than you might think. Um, so there's that, but I also hope that, I mean, there are Catholic book clubs out there. And, um, and I tend to think that maybe some of those book clubs are also stuck in that binary that we were talking about oh it's going to be this way or that way so we'll avoid it and i think that if uh if they were to or, or just ordinary catholic readers were to pick it up they would they would be surprised by what's there and also um, interested in a way that many are not about what wisdom the tradition broadly conceived has to offer yeah and i think one of the ways in which we hope to make it more broadly accessible was we took these scholars and we really forced them into a, a very um, tight framework that was, you know, it's uh, much shorter than an academic article, but it's supposed to have a lot of insights in it, but it's also supposed to have this kind of practical sort of piece to it. And the authors did a, an amazing job. So you got these really readable, practical texts, but they're really rooted in some deep sort of research. So there's just like, I think, exciting reading, but it's not like, pouring through an 800 page small print tome. So it's, it's uh, quick and fast and uh, really uh, insightful.